Hello, hello, and welcome to One Place Guide to Dragon Storm Fantasy. This adventure RPG love child can feel both super simple and overwhelmingly complicated at the same time. And we're here to help you find the perfect balance between all the game's mechanics and features, and share some class choice and combat tips, of course. Let's go! The first thing you will do in the game is choosing your class. There are four of them in total. Note that not all of them might be available on your server, and they all have different stats. Defense, Survival, Attack, Dexterity and Control. There is no best of here, really, so you have to go from your playstyle, what feels right for you. If you'd rather be able to absorb a lot of damage and single enemies out, so, not so versatile with generic mobs, but good with bosses, go for the warrior. If you would rather avoid damage but still focus on one enemy, pick the archer. Crowd control is exercised best with the blade master. So, study those charts before you make a decision. Luckily, you can create multiple characters on the same server. So, if you're undecisive, you can still try multiple classes in the first dungeon run and see which one works the best for you. Since you'll be thrown into battle pretty much right away, let's start battle screen. The things you want to pay the most attention to are, first of all, in the upper left corner, your character's health bar, this, this red line. You typically wouldn't want it depleted below 50 or 70% because those might be the conditions for getting 3 stars for completing a, a level or a dungeon run. There might also be some boosters like experience potions or inspiration to help you get more XP from this run or deal more damage. Next up are your skills in the lower right corner. Every single one of them except for the basic attack has cooldown, meaning they will not be available for a short time. So you would have to time those well to combine those in combat. They may not necessarily be your skills only. At some point you will also have a companion. In my case, it's an elfin. And their passive skill as well. For me, it's healing, which is pretty handy considering my mage is not big on uh, defense or survivability. As you can see, you can also rotate your quick access skills menu as you will obtain more of those as you get uh, further along in the game. Oh, level up. The one skill with this yellow roundy gauge is a timer before you can activate the dragon soul that awakens the ancient dragon soul within you, you get transformed and the dragon naturally deals a lot more damage than your base character. So this is particularly useful in boss fights, but as you will be able to see a little bit further along, it's good for those kind of mob waves as well, especially if you have a good control point, so to say. We saw a lot of those jumping numbers around, right? Uh, let's talk about those. So the grey ones and the yellow ones and purple ones is all the damage that you deal to the enemies. There may be basic hits, critical hits, or super critical hits. And as you can also see, sometimes not all of your attacks land successfully, the enemies can dodge them, which is okay. You will still be able to hit them a lot more than they will avoid your attack. Now one other number that you don't want to see pretty often are those red numbers. This is the damage that you're taking. Be careful not to have your health gauge depleted very fast. Next thing that is pretty important to know is that your attacks, all of them, they can be stacked in combos. And combos increase your chance to land a critical hit. More critical hits means dealing with your enemies much faster. 
means higher score in those type of dungeon runs specifically. You might also notice that I'm not doing anything. That's because we're in auto combat mode. It can be handy for you to study what moves work together better, how to time them and so on and so forth. But there is a massive disadvantage to that and it's that your character will not move around the map so actively uh, to avoid hits. You will see this mostly uh, during boss fights when a boss tries to perform an ult, an ultimate attack with his blinking red area in the auto combat mode. Your character will just stay in place, continue attacking, uh, but they will eventually suffer massive damage. Tremendous. So think twice before you decide to go for auto combat mode. And besides, it's it's really not as fun. Now, all this fighting is, of course, in the name of a higher goal, but also awesome loot, let's be honest. And you will get tons of it after every fight. You can also get coins, experience, and some other precious materials, of course. So let's see what you can do with it. Now, here is the main screen. I know it looks a little bit heavy but bear with me it's actually not as bad as it sounds and it doesn't take long to get used to it so the main two things that you'd be most interested in well three actually are your equipment the coins and the materials and what you can do with them is for example all of this equipment that, well, most of it is not available to me yet because I, uh, because my character does not meet the requirements for it. But what we can do is, for example, get it off the stuff that we know is not going to be of any use to us. So this ring, for example, if we don't need it, we can transmute it. Transmutation grants you a little bit more of power. It's not going to be a lot, but it is still fairly useful. And there we go, just like that. Then, of course, we can also upgrade all of the equipment that we have provided that we have enough whetstones of course but occasionally you will also get some gems which you can assign to the equipment in your arsenal to give you some bonuses for instance uh, extra defense or attack stats a little bit more of health points all this this will essentially translate into your power units as well next thing coins are mostly used for upgrading skills you can go and upgrade every single one one by one here or you can just wait until you have the necessary sum to pump all of them at once um, by 10 levels if i remember correctly so that is pretty handy next thing are materials and they can be used for upgrading all of the other stuff. Now, pretty much, well, almost everything you will get in this game, your mount, your equipment, your companion, even the wings, can be upgraded by itself with the use of materials. And it also has a soul. 
that utilizes this kind of aspects. It's the essence of certain um, effects, let's put it like that, to also aid you on your epic quest. Those are not mutually exclusive. Granted, if we upgrade the wings themselves with uh, all of the materials that we have, we won't have any left for upgrading the celestial soul. But this is something that you can invest the materials in. There are also all kinds of potions. You already saw how the experience one works, but there is also stamina potion that you might need when you run out of stamina. Just to show you um, how it works. So if we see the main quest, for example, and we don't have enough stamina here to complete a stage of it, then using this potion will allow us to carry on with the main mission, which is of course to stop the evil from destroying the world using overpowered ancient magical artifacts. Just a normal day, really. Now, you already took a glimpse into how what you get from those fights might help you. And since we're on this subject, let's talk about level progression. Level progression feels super quick in this game. By the end of chapter 1, you'll be at least level 30 easily. And levels are important criteria for restricting some dungeons and generally some activities to more advanced players who can really win there or restricting some of the equipment. So see, I do not match the level requirements for that. This is where levels really matter, but it's mostly not about your levels, but your power. Power is your ultimate KPI in Dragonstorm. And thousands of hundreds, even millions of power units is what lends you a better chance to stand against strong bosses. You already saw that we got power from upgrading stuff, from leveling up, from completing the dungeon, but there are more sources of power. So let's get back to skills. We do have uh, some money to upgrade those, at least. And just to show you how this works. See, it's not a lot, but combined, then this can uh, become a great asset to you. And keep in mind that, you know, growing power alone is not really going to be much use of you if you do not invest in your attacking abilities, in your ability to deal massive damage. For me, it is especially important because... A mage is a class that is very damage oriented. Now we already touched on the wings subject slightly. Uh, let's talk about mounts. Um, mounts are essentially a yet another source of power for you, plus some bonus stuff like HP increase or you know all, all kinds of passive effects that might also become very in handy in combat. Power here comes from two things, simple upgrades or empowerment. But that depends on if you get enough shards. Shards can mostly be obtained from high level dungeon runs. You saw one of them a bit earlier and you will get more of those as you progress in the game. Next thing you can upgrade is, of course, the Divine Dragon Soul that you get. You can have more than one, naturally, but uh, one is already pretty great. And in order to upgrade those, you will need to get Civil Lore of Divinity. That comes from both dungeon runs and main story. Then, of course, there's also equipment. You can upgrade it just like that with the shards or via enhancements, but for that, as you already saw, we need more whetstones. And of course there are companions, mine is this cute little elfin, 
The companions also have souls that may not necessarily uh, match the companion itself really well, but you know. And of course doing the side quests and also all kinds of dungeon runs or events, I mean there are insane amount of those every day, will get you overpowered in no time. I am currently hitting over two millions of yeah over two millions of it so you know not too shabby <laughs> this is all great right the equipment the experience you did see a lot of other things on my screen as well like rubies and diamonds and stuff so where else can you get things in this game well now is the time to shine for all of those seemingly overbearing little icons on your screen so there are more side activities besides those one-time missions, solo or um, multiplayer kind of modes. We have the awakening, where you kind of ascend to a higher stage or higher status with your character. So for example, from just a talented mage, I would go to a master mage, acquire new skills, and would be able to wear higher tier equipment. And the whole awakening quest is usually divided in three stages where you farm particular resources from mobs and then this culminates in a massive boss fight. Super epic. Then when you just start with the game you will be able to collect seven day rewards so those also include all kinds of daily stuff like taking part in daily raids or going to dungeons or going to an arena. It's a globally ranked activity where you first fight with NPCs and then other players. Then there's the bounty quest. I am not yet able to participate in that. Trials, of course, that lend you awesome passive effects, but also some of the rubies. Global rankings where you can pay your respects to other players and receive some basic stuff like coins and whetstones from that. Then there are daily quests besides the seven day login where you can also obtain all kinds of resources then there are login rewards and I mean it doesn't stop there this list just keeps on going then of course there's welfare where you can get some blessings or the daily sign in or leveling up dragon feast the activation code, then there are vaults, nice. Of course there will also be achievements for all kinds of things really. Um, achievements have several subcategories that themselves also have subcategories so you will never run out of things to be rewarded for in this game to be honest and perhaps the most pleasant or appealing thing is the afk rewards so you don't even have to do anything to get some awesome loot right if you do well in the games be just simply because of how you're how awesome you are you can collect extra rewards from those. With a fast contest and just by itself. And if you join the guild, you can also claim celery there. That's usually a handful of coins and some points. Improve some of the stats like accuracy, evasion, Basic defense, basic HP, basic penalties for attacks against you, and so on and so forth. 
using the guild's resources, so to say. So what I would like to say in the end is don't be anxious about not knowing what to do with all the things you get because you will literally be showered with those no matter which level you're at. Eventually, this will all fall into place. You will see that the rubies can be used for claiming rewards for the past days, diamonds can help you synthesize more powerful gems, and so on and so forth. There are many of those things in the game, but you will get a hang of all of this. So even though there is a lot going on in Dragonstorm, the game introduces you to new mechanics in a very smooth way, easing you into the vast, very diverse gameplay that it has. And that was our rundown of Dragonstorm Fantasy. Hope you'll enjoy this game! Join our Wombat Gamers Discord server and be on the lookout for more guides and let's plays. And check back on Wombat for more games! Would you like to see more titles like Dragonstorm on our platform? Write in the comments below and stay playing and slaying! Ciao!